Hello viewers, welcome to our program Immigration and You. I am your immigration attorney Michael Fulwani and once again we have with us immigration attorney Mr. David Nachman. Thank David, you, welcome. Michael. Thank you. Now in our today's program, but before we start the today's program, we want to remind you that the timings of our program has changed. Now this program that you are watching is going to be on every Sunday morning at 11.40 a.m. Now, let's start a program with what we left on the last program. Uh, there was a question about a person on prosecutorial discretion and all that. In the end, we said if person doesn't have anything, he's already under deportation proceedings or removal proceedings. One thing always is to look at whether that person can apply for a suspension of removal uh, and if that gets approved, the person can get a green card also. So basically, very briefly, uh, to tell you that there are two types of situations where this cancellation of removal can be applied. There are cases where a green card holder, because of a serious crime or something, it put in uh, removal proceedings. And there are other different requirements for those people who want to save their green card and get that kind of uh, relief under the law. So but let's talk about the other one, which are not permanent residents, which are the most common ones uh, that we can talk about. And let's say a person came without a visa, with a visa, visitor visa, overstayed, and whatever happened, person was put in uh, removal proceedings. He doesn't have Section 245I benefit. He doesn't have any underlying petition, everything. Nothing is there. There's one thing there that this kind of application, if you qualify, will lead to, for you to get a green card. But who can do that? First of all, it is very important to understand that can only be done during deportation proceedings, removal proceedings. I mean, you cannot just take a form, fill up and apply for it. And if you want to do that, you will have to go to the immigration and ICE and tell them, can you kindly put me in deportation removal proceedings so that I can apply for this benefit, which is a very risky and dangerous thing. But here are the basic requirements. You must be residing in the U.S. at least for 10 years. Prior to issuance of any notice to appear, that means any deportation proceeding, should not have started during the 10-year period because they'll only count, they'll stop. The meter stops when they put you in the deportation proceedings. The other thing is that you should not have contact, I mean, conducted any serious offense, you should have not been actually convicted for any serious offense. And you have to show that the removal will result in exceptional hardship to your US citizen or a green card holder spouse or a parent or a child or there's a battered spouse or a child of a US citizen or a green card holder. Uh, and prior, to, and again, there also there's a condition that uh, the application cannot be done if within three years prior to the notice of appearance has been issued, that's a possible. The person should not be inadmissible for serious crimes, something like we said before. And again, the most important thing is that the removal of this person from the United States will cause extreme hardship. And we have seen cases where a person is married to a U.S. citizen, your U.S. citizen children, and if the husband who's the only person who's, you know, supporting the family is deported. It's a serious problem for the citizen wife and the child also. So these are the things that, uh, see, once upon a time, it was a very difficult thing to get the relief by the immigration judge. Times have changed somewhat. There's a prosecutorial discretion, and even the thinking of the judges and the government attorneys has somewhat changed. They are a little more reasonable and humane. What would you say, David? Um, I, I agree with you, Michael. I mean, I think that the climate that we're in right now is, um, is a new one. Um, prosecutorial discretion is a new uh, way of thinking. Uh, we also know that uh, while many people tout prosecutorial discretion as, a, as an end-all, be-all, we also know that not every single officer out there knows what it is. It's, it's going to take a little bit of education to help them to understand and apply the prosecutorial discretion tenets. Uh, what you said about cancellation re of removal is very interesting. Um, I think that um, what I'd like to just throw in on the cancellation of removal issue is that uh, we found it very, very difficult to get a person who's not in proceedings into proceedings. Um, it's not like you can pick up the telephone and call ICE and get the person into proceedings. So just that in and of itself is a difficult uh, procedure. 
So it's um, not insurmountable. Uh, there may be creative ways to do it, but it's not easy to do. And then once you've put someone into a proceeding, if they're not already in a proceeding, of course, then of course there's a 50-50 chance that they could end up being removed as opposed to being granted the affirmative relief of cancellation that you've asked for. So uh, we don't recommend cancellation necessarily as a, uh, you know, as a uh, way to get a result uh, of relief, but it is definitely an affirmative defense if you're in if you're a there, proceeding. See, if, you're I, there, if you're there, as I say in Hindi, give it a shot. As I say in Hindi, marta kya nahi karta. Means the person is going to die anyway, he's already in the deportation position. What is he going to lose? He's already there. Either he gets deported or he doesn't get deported. Exactly. So there, there is, of course, and there's no other relief available. That is, in my opinion, the best option. Right. Now, we were talking about this uh, cancellation of removal. A couple of more items that I want to talk about. Who is not eligible? We talk about who can apply. Who is not eligible? A person who entered as a crewman is not eligible. An exchange visitor visa person that is subject to a two-year foreign residency requirement is not eligible. Anybody who assisted or participate in prosecution of an individual is not eligible. Now, how you apply for the uh, suspension of removal, there's an application form, uh, EOIR 42B, it's eight pages, a lot of information has to be given in this. And if uh, sometimes even the government attorneys feel sorry for the person or say, okay, either they don't oppose or they oppose not very hardly and say, leave up to the judge. And that the judge is easy for the judge to then grant it because the government kind of is taking a somewhat middle position, okay, it's up to you. Government doesn't really object or you know oppose too much. So one other item besides this is, uh, Again, people who want to get married, the US citizens, young person who wants to get married in India, always a question, uh, shall I apply for a fiancé visa? Shall I apply for, uh, get married and apply for direct green card processing? And they have some impression that there's a big time difference. I just checked uh, the processing times and I find that the I-130 approval, that is the after marriage a person applies for the, the green card of the wife or husband, is about five months to six months. Same thing about a fiancé petition is about five months. So there's really not, maybe even a month or two. It makes no sense because first of all, the K-1 visas, the American consuls in India especially looking not very uh, favorably. And then even if a person gets a K-1, he comes here, he has to get married in 90 days, applies for adjustment or status, may take another six months. His green card is delayed by one year. He directly comes even waiting two more months. He directly comes as an immigrant, he is stamped on a green card, I mean passport, at the port of entry. So he becomes a permanent resident day one at the time of landing. And his meter for citizenship starts that day. Three years down the road, that person can then become a U.S. citizen. In between, of course, there is a 751 form to be filed for removal of the condition. That is a step in between the stamping on the passport, getting the green card, and then getting the conditional status change, and then maybe a year down the road, apply for citizenship. In my opinion, that is the best course of action than people trying to struggle with K-1 or K-3 and whatnot. Yeah. No, I would agree, Michael. And I think that, um, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, we always get the calls in the office about uh, all the different methodologies for being able to obtain the green card for uh, a person who uh, is either a potential spouse or is the spouse. And what we do is we try to go through the whole analysis for each one and lay out the timing. But ultimately, um, you know, if the person, of course, is in the United States and you can file here, that's the best way to do it because then, of course, you have control of the file as opposed to leaving it to the uh, U.S. consulate abroad to make the determination. Yeah, two, two other, uh, we had a couple of minutes, two other important things is I see some cases where a person came on a visitor visa and uh, he had in mind probably getting married to a citizen, so he came on a visitor visa and immediately got, after two weeks, got married and applied for adjustment status. Well, I can tell you right off the bat that that's going to be problematic. And that's Preconceived because, intent. Exactly. That's the so, problem. Yep. What I'm saying is that it's okay if a person comes with a real intent to stay and, you know, tourism or something. And then there's a change in the plan. He meet a girl, you know, two or three months down the road, something. Okay, that's okay. Right. Changing the plan is not a problem. 
But preconceived intent is a problem. When does that plan, when is that plan allowed to change? That's I would I say the within 30 days you something, definitely you have a problem. Yeah. Between 30 and 60 days is a little mis maybe. Right. And it's, after 90 days, you're clear. Exactly. So and that's, 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 that's the three right. step And that's thing. the 60, 90 30, day rule. 30, 60, and 90 day rule. Correct. 30, 60, 90 day fraud rule, which is the general guideline that helps us to understand when that preconceived intent notion fades. Yeah. Right. Again, we're talking about the marriages, and I would keep on reminding people every time, almost a few times in a, in a year, we say that. Unfortunately, people are not getting the message. Clearly, and I decided I'm going to almost do in every program now. Please, please, if you go to India to get married, and if you are doing a religious marriage, do the proper vidhi, do the religious ceremony, make sure you have pictures. Because when your wife goes or husband goes for interview, first question counsel says, show me your wedding pictures. And he's putting the garland, or putting the ring. Say, I don't think this is an engagement ceremony. It's not a marriage ceremony. Right. So it's very, very important. And why people do that? People do that because what they do, without doing the ceremony, they go to the registrar of marriages, get a certificate or called a memorandum of marriage. Now, memorandum of marriage, what it does, they are only registering the ceremony. The ceremony never took place. That memorandum is not valid. It's actually fraudulent. And they don't understand. And when they come to you and me, they say, oh, I have a marriage certificate. I got married on this date, the one that is in the registration. But then you probe further, the marriage that registration says date of marriage and that never happened right. so you ask oh did you have the ceremony on this no 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 we not had yet we could do that later on right. so the councils have become very smart because they are see i'm only seeing maybe one or two or three cases every week council is seeing every day every day by tons council i mean a lot of people do i don't know why they are doing it because this will lead this leads to 6c a lot of times and sometimes the council if the interview time the person says the truth oh we really never had a ceremony because we thought so it was a mistaken thing they did well michael you have to give the u.s department of state a lot of credit because essentially these are people who are and and when i was i was at georgetown university where it's the largest foreign service school in the country and the individuals who are studying with me most of them have gone abroad and they are foreign servants and uh, they are uh, they're keenly tuned into cultural nuances. Yes. And this is something that they understand. And they're going to be looking at our clients to make sure that they also are following those cultural nuances. I tell you interesting things. Some of the people think that uh, they don't know these cultural things. And they keep how would they know? How would he know? How would he know? That's their don't job. Forget. That's their job. Yeah, and because you don't understand that he's watch, watching the interviewing so many people every day, they know everything. Exactly. And there one person who was Hindi speaking consul, you know, right. just like you. <laughs> <laughs> so they were talking to each other something, and consul was listening. Aha, aha. Then he started speaking Hindi to them. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! So be careful. Prepare well. Very, very well. Prepare yourself for any interview that you have before American consulate. I think we are running out of time, and uh, David, thank you very much for coming on the program. And continue. Always my pleasure. You, I know you are going to continue to come every time now that me and David, our partners, will be there every week. And thank you also. Keep watching the program, and you will see that we are going to bring to you the latest and most valuable information every week. So please keep us watching on ITV. Thank you very much, and goodbye.